Did you know that the first battery energy storage system was developed over 2,000 years ago? Much, much later, with a whole lot more bells and whistles, the first utility-scale battery energy storage system in the United States was commissioned in my hometown of Portland, Oregon in 2012. Today, battery energy storage systems are a vital component of green energy projects throughout the world. A sometimes overlooked but extremely valuable component of these systems are heavy-duty and high-power connectors. And guess what, my friends? That's exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Battery energy storage systems can reduce energy costs, encourage trends toward clean energy, and help maintain grid reliability during peak demand. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Jason Rowe from TE Connectivity and I explore the key subsystems, architecture, and system solutions for residential and commercial battery energy storage systems. We also investigate the TE Connectivity heavy duty and high power connectors best suited for these kinds of applications and how you can get started using these solutions in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from TE Connectivity. Hi, Jason. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about TE Connectivity's heavy-duty connectors and high-power connectors in battery energy storage systems today. But Jason, before we dig into the details, we're looking at on-grid and off-grid applications here, right? Yeah, exactly. We're looking at the overall landscape from power generation to power transmission, and then later on to the power consumption side. And part of this ecosystem is really on-grid, where we have power generation from clean energy solutions like solar or wind, where we need large-scale power conversion systems, battery systems, or inverters. And then we need to transmit this energy along the grid, where we have potentially substation energy storage systems, that would use these large-scale power conversion systems along with battery storage systems. And as we move further down the energy transmission system, so to speak, we will encounter those off-grid power consumption areas like factories or residential consumers who want to adopt you know, smaller-scale energy storage systems that may be used in conjunction with their solar panels and inverters. We even see this sort of technology being employed in electric vehicle charging infrastructures. Very cool. Now, Jason, walk me through the main subsystems in a battery energy storage system. So for the sake of our discussion, when we talk about the on-grid versus off-grid solutions, we're really dealing with very similar building blocks, but scaled differently. We need to take the DC power created by the green energy source, which is in a DC voltage and convert it to an AC voltage, which can then be transmitted directly to the grid. Other times we need to store that harvested DC energy in a battery system, which will need to then later be converted to AC voltage for transmission. The conversion of the DC voltage to AC voltage is done with inverters or power conversion systems, depending on how the energy was harvested or stored. The battery system itself will scale as the volume of energy changes from container-sized batteries for like megawatt stations to rack-mounted solutions for commercial applications and even like wall or floor-mounted solutions for residential use for those applications below like say 50 kilowatts. You know, the battery system is where we really see the biggest connector innovations and use cases. So, Jason, let's dig a little deeper into a battery system. What does the architecture look like? So, remember that the battery system is scalable, but the core building blocks are the things like the battery packs and the battery management system. The battery packs are the collection of battery cells that are connected together to create a uniform power output unit, so to speak. 
these cells are monitored locally by the battery management unit inside of the pack. And then multiples of these battery packs are connected in series to achieve the higher voltage levels of the overall system. The battery management system that controls the energy movements to and from the individual packs and helps to balance the overall system loads. And this battery management system is critical for the safety and reliability and the function of the overall battery system, monitoring the health of the packs, the voltage levels, the temperatures of the overall system. So battery energy storage systems can be used in residential areas and commercial areas. So walk me through the differences of these two systems. The big difference when we talk about the residential versus commercial BAS applications is in the physical size and capacity of the energy storage systems. Residential units are targeting more of the 20 kilowatt hour energy and operating at less than say 600 volts, since most people don't have access to the higher voltage levels at your home. The footprint for these residential units is quite small. It can easily fit in your garage or utility room and are usually stacked in a configuration where additional battery capacity can be easily added by simply stacking one module on top of the existing system. The charge and discharge currents for these units can range from 25 amps up to 200 amps. When we think about the commercial solutions, we're talking about larger either rack-mounted systems or even container-sized systems that are connected to much higher voltage levels, something you know on the order of 1,500 to 2,500 volt circuits. These larger systems have various charge and discharge rates, which is called the C-rate. And that C rate affects the current carrying capacity needed for those battery pack connections. With a higher current draw, there is a need to look at other options for cooling the system. So the residential systems are typically air-cooled, whereas some of these commercial applications are looking at alternative solutions to air cooling and even going to things like liquid cooling. And since these commercial BESS applications are more exposed to the elements, that leads to needing connectors that are sealed to IP ratings. All right. So, Jason, what about the commercial energy storage systems? What does TE Connectivity offer for these kinds of systems? So, for those commercial applications, we have a series called our HPC product line, which has a really wide range of single pole power solutions from 200 amps up to 400 amps. And this covers the majority of the applications where customers are looking for 1500 volt capable products with IP67 protection. And we've developed a one piece contact design that helps to provide excellent temperature rise control along with the ability to integrate an NTC temperature sensor that can allow for intelligent safety monitoring with up to a you know, 95% accuracy. The flexible cable connection has a smart locking system, which makes for easy unlocking in the field and allows for 360 degrees of rotation of the plug. So let's dig into the details of these specific product lines a bit. What benefits does this family of solutions bring to the table? So in addition to the you know wide current rating or options that are available to it, we need to be able to accept a various degree of wire sizes from 50 millimeter squared, you know, all the way up to 95 millimeter squared conductor diameters. In addition to that smart locking system we spoke about, we have made the product more safe by adding a fingerproof feature on the receptacle side that prevents the finger from touching any of the potentially hot surfaces. On the panel mounted side, we offer two different options for connecting to the bus bar a threaded side or an unthreaded side. This allows the designer freedom to choose what works best for them. That easy to plug in design, that one piece construction, along with the ability to integrate that temperature sensing modules. You know, those are some of those key benefits of this product family. So what about residential systems? What does TE connectivity offer in this case? So residential systems are traditionally stacked, you know, vertically, which leads to an overall kind of different 
type of interconnect requirements. These interconnects also need to include not only the power connectivity, but also the signal lines that are used to communicate between the various stacked modules. And since these units are stacked on top of each other, and, and they're sometimes quite heavy, a robust construction of the connector along with some degree of tolerance for misalignment and floating is needed in these sort of configurations. And so we have two product offerings in the residential space that are targeting that less than 1,000 volt and 200 amp current rating. The first being the HTC HMN module, which is a frame-based solution with positions that can be populated with up to six different modules. These modules can include signal pins or power pins and really can be selected based on the application need. An example of that kind of high voltage residential bus using the HTC HMN module could have four power pins that are operating at 70 amps each along with 12 lower current signal lines. And the HMN docking frame allows for around two millimeters of float due to the pre-leading pins and floating washers that we developed in this connector series. The second offering is what we call our HDC stacked hybrid connector, which is a molded housing with six power cavities and 12 signal cavities. Four of the power cavities can accept up to 120 amp contacts, while the remaining two are reserved for more like 20 amp signals. The 12 signal locations are intended to be used with lower current, roughly five amp signals, you know, operating around 50 volts. And this HDC stacked solution has pre-alignment features like what we saw with the HMM module, but these pre-alignment features allow for up to 2.4 millimeters of float. And the overall construction is a bit more miniaturized in the HTC stacked solution. Both solutions provide excellent options for customers looking to create these sort of stacked applications. So Jason, what about the hybrid stacked connectors you mentioned earlier? Can we talk about those a bit as well? Yeah, I think one of the really unique features of the hybrid stack connector is the ability to miniaturize the overall design. The hybrid design of the connector allows for better utilization of space for both the signal and the power connections. There's also an improved reliability with the design with a long contact overlap of more than five millimeters. And the floating design can compensate for a greater range up to 2.4 millimeters of misalignment. We have all those different features, the long contact overlap, the high degree of float, and then we can couple that in with the excellent signal performance of the gold-plated contacts and some improved operational efficiency that comes with the stamped and formed female contact. And this really becomes a big win for the customers to enhance their processing performance and the reliability of their overall system. So Jason, what kind of supporting assets does TE Connectivity offer for these solutions? So in addition to myself as being a resource for TE, we have sample kits that can be ordered, promotional videos that you can find on our website that go into even more detail about the product lines and their offerings. And we have set up a specific landing page for our HTC product portfolio, along with additional data sheets and information about our HPC and stacked hybrid connectors. Excellent. Well, Jason, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you as well. Have a great day. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from TE Connectivity. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash EE Journal.